Welcome back everyone. This video we are going to be talking about the cleaning process. But we're going to focus specifically on outliers. It's going to be a pretty simple video and in the next video we're going to be continuing the outliers and going through a specific process. So this one's kind of just an introduction and we're just going to talk about what to consider when we're approaching outliers, all of that stuff. So what is an outlier? Well if you think of like the normal distribution for example, an outlier may be a value that is like really, really, really far up here. So let's draw this out like this. You can see that, you know, there's really not that many people out here, but there's like one or two extremely, extremely high values. So this is the value, how, how big it is, and this is number of people, or instances if we want to be vague. That is an outlier. The same thing could happen in the opposite direction. Outliers are interesting when it comes to data cleaning. And this is where that controversial thing I was mentioning a couple videos ago comes up where some people say, oh, get rid of them. Other people say, oh, they're essential because they actually do represent reality. So one of the first things is you want to make sure you get rid of any invalid outliers. So an example of an outlier might be for age. You might have values from 100 to like maybe even 130 or something. And then you have a couple values in there that are like 487. <laughs> and you look at that and you say, well, clearly that's a lie or someone typed that in wrong. Well, that is exactly what an invalid outlier is. The value is not legitimate. So you, for that, you want to either replace it with null or go through the process I'm gonna be talking about in this video and the next video. If it is a valid outlier, meaning the value is correct, then you want to keep it because it is legitimate but you still might want to go through a, a cleaning process, which you'll see in these two videos here. So valid outliers, you wanna keep them for now, but invalid outliers, you wanna mark them somehow to say, these need to be reduced to a more realistic value or replaced with null. The outliers are going to completely mess up your measures of central tendency, because if you have an age like 487, well, if you took the range, for example, that's going to make the range seem much, much higher than it really truly is. So you gotta really be careful with the outliers. They affect how our algorithms work. They affect how our data looks, which is a huge thing. Once we start talking about data visualization, this chart could look a whole lot prettier and a lot more useful if we didn't have this section right here that is only contributing a very small amount of information. The goal when we're doing machine learning is to represent a lot of information without a lot of information. <laughs> so we try to clean out information that's useless, keep the information that's most useful, so we have very dense, powerful, useful information. Close to the minimum needed to make predictions and to find correlations in our data. So those are the two things to be aware of with outliers. One is they mess up our central tendency, and two, they mess up our data visualization. In the next video, I'm gonna be talking about how we address these outliers through a process called a clamp transformation. It's not crazy complex, but complex enough where I didn't want to overdo this video and make it like forever long, where no one watches it and it's super lame. So next video will just be dedicated to the clamp transformation. Hopefully this is all making sense to you guys. If you have any questions or comments, concerns, or would just like to say have a nice day, just go into the comments section and just, just let me have it. Just give me what you got, unless it's me. Okay, thank you. Please be sure to subscribe. Help me uh, take over the YouTubes. <laughs> Peace.